I love Ralph Ragnick. It's crystal clear. It's not that difficult. You don't even need glasses to analyze and to see where the problems are. So now it's only about how do we solve them. And for me, it's clear. It's not, it's not, it's not enough to do some little minor uh, amendments, some little issues here and there, some minor cosmetic things. No, this is, in medicine, you would see this is an operation at the open heart. This is also some... Ralph Ragnick speaking in his pre-match press conference before the Arsenal game, before we got punt 3-1, before we conceded our seventh goal in two games in a week where we've been humiliated at the hands of Liverpool and at Arsenal and at the end of a season where it's all collapsed. And Ralph Radnick, speaking in his press conference there, say what you want about Ralph Radnick as Manchester United's manager. That is not why we brought him to the club. I think it's just as important for us to keep Ralph Radnick behind the scenes as it is for Eric Ten Hag to become our new manager. That's how significant I think his position inside the club is. And I want to do this video in support of Ralph Rannick. That might be the wrong way to describe it. But for years, for so long, United fans have been, it felt like we've been swimming upstream against the tide, against the Glazers, against Ed Woodward. And we've just been fighting because we know what's been going wrong at our club. Now, Jose Mourinho might have spoken about it previously, about football heritage, which I will get into later in this video. But Ralph Randick is the first Manchester United manager to really, truly come out and say it like it is. And the, the further this season goes and the more that he gets humiliated by his players, the more honest and open he is. After the Liverpool game, him saying there that United need up to 10 players for the rebuild. We probably do. We absolutely do. But I stand by Ralph Randick. Now, if you rewind to this, right... This was my reaction when Manchester United got Ralph Rannick in as, as our interim manager. As you can see. How are you all excited. doing? Sam here, United People's TV. Live I'm a little with bit some excited, breaking... but the reason I was excited wasn't simply because I thought that we were going to be stuck. It was very... If I'm looking at a percentage split of the reason I was excited, I would say it was 25% to do with the football and 75% to do with Ralph Rannick and what he could do at Manchester United. Obviously, the idea that we, were, we might uh, adopt a, a gag and press system and that the football might improve and we could do something. Hell, let's see what goes on in the Champions League. We've got we've got Pogba, we've got Ronaldo, let's go. And then uh, you saw what happened there. And you've seen what's happened with the football since. But it was that 75%. His legacies at the clubs that he has left behind is all about the structures that he's built whether it's Hoffenheim and turning it from a village club into a Bundesliga regular club, whether it's Leipzig and winning promotion from that with them from Bundesliga, the second division to the Bundesliga, and then getting them into a Champions League team. They're going into the champ in the Europa League semifinals this week against Rangers. Ralph Randick is a man who has so much experience at running football clubs. That is where and why we hired him. There was zero point in us doing that if... We were just going to let him go at the end of the season. I said this back in November, back before we had Ralph Radnick, right? So the more you read up on it and the more you read and the more you learn about Radnick, the more impressive he is. Of course, it depends on United pulling their finger out. But if you look at a short term of Ralph Radnick on an interim role until the summer with a plan to move into a director role and then Eric Ten Hag, it makes too much sense. Both things have happened since. And my, as I said, if I, my, my excitement, the reason, the reason I was excited about Ragnik coming in wasn't just about the football in any way, shape or form. It was about what he could bring to the club and bring next. Because I tell you what, when you look at Manchester United now and everything that's going on, it just doesn't look good, does it? It really doesn't look And the thing that annoys me here, I'm sorry, I'm just getting this ready because I realised I didn't do this before. The reason I'm starting to get annoyed is quite clear. And it's this, right? It's absolutely this. For me, it's not a question of having agreed upon a contract or whatever for the next two years. It's in fact, I'm 64 very soon. For me, it's not about having a contract on paper. For me, it's about what will really happen. How much does Eric Ten Hag and the board of Manchester United really want to know about my opinion, about my experience? And this is what we haven't spoken about as yet. So Ralph Rannick there confirming that Manchester United haven't really spoken to him too much about what that role is going to be. Man United might be dumber than I ever thought they were if we, if we still haven't had these conversations with Ralph Ragnick. Ralph can be that voice that we have needed so 
much for so, so long. Now, some of you, and I kind of had this argument on Twitter earlier, some of you are going back towards what Jose Mourinho said back in the day. Jose Mourinho was equally as vociferous towards the club, but I'm telling you it was coming from a different perspective. Jose Mourinho's legacy is built on success, immediate gratification and silverware. If he doesn't get that, he'll lash out at everything and everybody to protect his own image. Ralph Ragnick and everything that he's done and everything that he's starting to do, right, when he's calling out and saying that we need a real bit rebuild, when he's coming out here and saying that Man United need open heart surgery, that's how bad it is. It's not cosmetic anymore. It's not about signing a certain player here or a certain player there and fixing the problems. He wants what is best for United because what's best for United is best for him. That's where it aligns. It's in his own legacy interest if what he leaves behind at United is a club that can thrive and go on. And I think he can be a man that's so significant in steering that conversation and steering that shit because it's all good and well. Getting the cosmetic goodness of getting Eric Ten Hag in, bringing him in as our new manager is a cosmetic fix that doesn't still fix the problems, the deep, deep problems that we've had in our club for so fucking long. It took us so, it took us years to get rid of him. That guy. Fucking Ed Woodward, man. Him and his strategy, plain performance. It doesn't affect what we can do commercially. Utter, utter fabrication and lies. It's been proven correct by stagnation over the last five years of Manchester United as a commercial club. It's his strategy that's dragged us down into this mess. And I think it's his strategy that can start helping steer us out of that mess taking us out of the shadows and start actually operating as a football club. And he's there. He's at the club. He's saying it all openly. For Manchester United to be leaving him in the dark over that role, it really, really frustrates me. And I wouldn't be surprised if he walked away. But for this man there to be able to really... I probably should have got a better, better picture of Eric Ten Hag there. Sorry, Eric. I'll do it next time. But for him to have a, the best possible chance of success, we have to give him the conditions to succeed at the club. And I swear to God, if we turn our back on Ralph Radnick, we turn our back on this consultancy role, which is the only reason we brought him in. If we weren't going to give him that role, then bringing in a manager who hasn't managed for two years, over two years, to be our manager for six months, what the hell was the point? It wasn't worth it. It was the wrong decision. I personally, now you might disagree with this. If we had got Conte in, there's no doubt that we would probably be in the top four this season. We probably would have Champions League football next year. And we may have, you know, who knows what would have happened in the league or the Champions League. We would have been better uh, results in terms of since he was appointed in November. And maybe you could say the same thing about Michael Carrick. Obviously, three games undefeated. Draw against Chelsea, beat Arsenal, beat Villarreal, I think it was. Um, was it Valencia? I can't remember. 1-2, drew one. Probably would have been better with him. I would rather have had the short-term pain of what has happened since Ragnick's been appointed. Because I swear to God, you, you can try and criticise him all you want, man. We were playing good football after one training session against Crystal Palace before the players packed it in and said, you know what, I can't be arsed with this. This is way too difficult. I'd rather just sit here, complain, and I'm good at that. A bit like what Jesse Lingard is doing right now. Perfect. Paul Scholes speaking after the game. This is what he said. It's an absolute mess. It's a disaster of a dressing room. I had a quick chat with, chat with Jesse there. And I'm sure he won't mind me saying it. The dressing room's just a disaster. A I'm sure Jesse will mind you saying, Paul, because you just exposed him as probably one of the dressing room leaks. Ralph Rannick was asked about that. And he goes, you have to ask Jesse Lingard. He's managing a team of entitled, experienced, they think they know it all players who are on huge wages and can't be told otherwise, like spoiled children. That's the culture he's come into. It's the culture we need to get rid of. When Fergie came in back in the day, he had to get rid of a drinking culture that has sort of consumed Manchester United to reinstill that winning mentality and realise that, you know what, you're professional football players. You actually could win things if you stopped fucking drinking. And it, was, well, it wasn't just a drinking, but it was, it was a, a, a symbolic part of that whole culture that Fergie had to get rid of before he could succeed. Ten Hag has that culture that he needs to get rid of before he can succeed. And a man who can absolutely help him in doing that is Ralph Rannick. And I swear, if we turn our backs on Ralph, then we are dumber than I ever thought we were. Our board really do not want us to ever succeed. 
It's at that crossroads. That's, what, that's how strongly I feel about it. And genuinely, I would go as far as to say that Ralph Radnick staying at the club in some sort of capacity is equally as important as Eric Ten Hag coming in as our new manager. All these thi- all of them are pieces to the puzzle. And without one piece, there's going to be a gaping hole. Whether that piece would have been te- Ten Hag, whether that piece would have been Ralph Radnick, all the right players, they all contribute. And for me, hearing Ralph speaking so honestly in this interview before the Arsenal game, it's not cosmetic. It's open heart surgery. He's really starting to, I suppose, loosen his lips. However you want to describe what Ralph Rannick is doing, he's doing it with a smile on his face because he knows it needs to be said. And we all have smiles on our faces because we know it needs to be said. And we've been saying it for years. And Ralph is the man who's actually coming out and saying it articulately, intelligently, and in a way that's supposed to be constructive criticism rather than just shouting football heritage. Look how many cups I've won. I. He word I. I want, no, no, speaking of I, I want Manchester United to listen to Ralph, man. Listen to him. Everything he's saying is correct. I swear to God, if we turn our backs on him, we deserve the wilderness that we're walking into. Well, we're already in the wilderness. We deserve to stay there. That's what, that's, that's why I think. You let me know what you think about Ralph Radnick and Eric Ten Hag and everything that's coming next, but it feels like our club is genuine. And we've spoken about false dawns. We've spoken about crossroads before, but we're at one right now where if we back it and we back it properly, these two men and John Murto and everything that goes on behind the scenes can work together in unison to take Manchester United out of the shadows again. And I think that could happen. We don't. Let's see what goes on. You can let me know what you think about that in the comments. I feel pretty passionately about this. As I said, I was very excited about Rannick at the start. 75% of that excitement was based about what would happen after his interim role, which we're about to walk into. I think we need him there. I really, really do. And I'm going to be fuming if he's not and the club turns turns it back on him. I really will be.